Welcome back, everyone, to LCS Challengers League. A fantastic interview beatdown. I mean, the aspirations coming out from Scary Jerry, talking about how it's more of a whatever way the wind blows, I will go with it. But, hey, it would be really nice to see him in LCS in the future. It would be. And he's clear that he's still motivated to keep playing. He loves his time here in Challengers League, playing with Maryville. So, who knows? He, could still have a, he still has a lot of time to play, and who knows how far he'll go. Yeah, motivated but self-critical as well, which I think is yeah, very good. great for someone moving forward. We love that. All right, now moving on to our second match of the day. It is going to be Wildcard versus AoE Gold, starting up with the rosters of AoE. Now, this squad coming up first, they're off a pretty good swing of momentum right now. Players like Will and Breezy have been stepping up, and now they sit on two back-to-back 2-0s, -back but they still got a lot of work to do, B. They do. I've always been a fan of Breezy and Will, our summer child, making his summer return, <laughs> as he often does, has been shaky. He himself plays pretty well overall, but things are not all sunshine and daisies on AoE's side. But when they look good, it is when Will and Breezy are able to have these monstrous performances and they lead these team fights here where people like Lynx, who's been pretty good so far this year, are able to put in the damage. And Gabby, those are two names we're going to be talking about a lot, especially once we start getting these clips rolling, because it's focused around AoE's team fight, and Will and Breezy have been these big facilitators for their team fight. Uh, jungle support, it's it, it's kind of a match made in heaven for those two, and they are the ones who often do get the ball rolling for AoE, if we can pull up those clips right now. Uh, that team fight, very, very important for AoE, Gabby. Yeah, and for a player like Will, who specifically calls out the fact that he wants to make his team look good. And when yeah. you can have supports be on the engage picks, like you see the Nautilus here for Breezy, then that actually opens up jungle a lot too, because you can double down on engage, but you can go more f facilitative or supportive. Like that's why we've seen Ivern come through and be able to kind of double up on some of that lockdown. And when your support and your jungler can lead the charge in the playmaking, that opens opens up a lot of the brain power pretty much for your carries to just focus on doing just that. Dishing out the damage and carrying and not worrying about if they're protected or not because the other duo on the squad is already taking care of it. Yeah, you got a job to do in AoE when they do click together. You can see right there one of those plays coming out from the uh, mid jungle duo that we saw that time, how sneaky they can be. Uh, they're really good at tearing apart a lot of these teams once they actually get their setup for these neutral objectives. But from what I understand, uh, Beatdown, you had a little bit of a closer talk with Will, if I'm correct? Uh, not me. He had an interview before that we're Kangas. pulling back. Yeah, it was yeah. Kangas who had a talk with him. And it's just about him and what his aspirations are overall. Yeah, so let's pull that up to see uh, what's going on in the mind of Will. Like, else, like, it's kind of do or die for LCS. Like, it's my whole career, you know? Like, if I don't make it LCS, I really have nothing else to live for. The only option then, what kind of steps are, are we uh, expected to see from Will this summer? You know, uh, is, do you have a goal set in mind for this split? Um, I think mainly just showing off how good I can play. Um... You know, another big thing for me was um, just making my teammates as good as possible, as good as I can make them during the split, and then um, making sure I play individually the best I can. So it looks the best going into next year. Uh, it's a team game, so you have to be focused on bolstering up your teammates as well as yourself. We'll put it excellent there. Now, one of the wildest contenders they'll have to face off, a team we know for playing more of a out of the meta pocket, so to say, which made for a surprising round one when they played a little bit more standard, but it's still working. A lot of that coming from one of our MVP contenders in Keelbeat. That's right, there's Keel, who has been having an amazing split so far here in summer, and the new addition to this squad in Zamudo and Don Bray. Zamudo being a player we were all really excited about. Anyone who kept an eye on the Tier 2 slash Tier 3 scene, really sad he didn't get a look. But now that he's finally here, he's living up to the hype. And Don Bray as well, someone who I was really high on personally, who I thought performed well when he subbed for 100 Thieves next last year during the Proving Ground circuit. And they've had a very interesting way of uh, kind of getting up uh, into the standings. 
Uh, yeah, I, I say interesting, but it seems more standard to one end. They do a lot of team fighting. They're really, yeah. really good at team fighting. It's just the ways that they get there. You know, a lot of this is led by the fact that they are very heavy on the anti-flanking routes that they uh, set up. So they have Saligo and Zamudo just denying a lot of these flanks that are going to come in. So we want to highlight some of that team fighting that's coming out of Wild Card because, as I said, back in spring it was absolutely amazing, and this summer it has been fantastic as well. And this really does set the stage for how much of a battle this is going to be around the 5v5s, Gabby. Oh, yes. And I mean, on this particular stream, we got to see some action from Wildcard previously, but Wildcard know how to come together and be able to assert that pressure onto the opposition, as you can see here, and just kind of hit that go button. And I think that one thing you have to look at is when you see changing pieces coming into the roster with Zamudo and then Dombre in the support position, you think, yeah. okay, what are they going to do for this team? How much is that going to change the identity of a squad that was making an name for themselves and i think that they can be happy with what they have come to the table with when speaking of denial for instance zamudo we saw yesterday willing to pull out the quinn to do just that <laughs> in the top lane matchup uh -huh. yeah. and that willingness to really put pressure on the enemy team in terms of draft adaptations as well is something that's going to give them a strength to set up for the chances to get these heavy team fights going yeah, and it's interesting to compare this team up with AoE. Both teams, back when they were provisional and fixed teams last split, these were two of the teams that were on the upper ends of uh, how those teams did overall. But even with these minimal changes, it is Wildcard who seem to be blossoming and AoE who are kind of struggling at the moment. Having these highs, but also having a lot of these lows. So trying to keep up that consistency, especially against someone like Wildcard, is going to be very important if they want to be the ones in top eight. All right, the battle of the 5v5s, the draft is now ready. So without further ado, let's send it over for game number one, of AOE versus Wildcard. All right, I am ready for some Me too. scrappy team fights, hopefully, between hopefully. AOE and Wildcard. Are there any drafting trends that you think that we can expect from this matchup? I'll tell you what, uh, I think uh, Kindred is going to be banned away. Uh, Keel is uh, uh, honestly just historic Kindred player. Now that it's meta, don't don't let him have that champion. Of course, Deserex so desperately. I hear his voice in the ether wants me to talk about the Karthus. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, I, I don't know where, but I, I hear him mentioning the Karthus, and of course that is a big one as well. And uh, not for who you think. Zamudo, if you hadn't watched, it's really worth going back and checking out. He did play the Karthus top. Uh, it was really funny and it was good. Yeah, maybe that was good. I'm seeing a not quite the win rate on it, but uh, it's not the, important. The you played play. lane well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So watch part of the vod. Yeah, first ten minutes. Then, yeah, yeah, first ten minutes. But we we got some Karthus on the stream yesterday, just not That's the true. the same scenario. And it was a bot lane Karthus, but nonetheless, we'll see what AOE and Wild Card end up bringing through. I think it's been fun watching the development of some of these players in terms of their champion pools concept for instance historically leaning on a lot of comfort picks but has been developing i loved getting to hear from him in the post game interview yesterday yeah. and i think that one thing he emphasized that is sometimes discussed but not as importantly as he made it be is the synergy of a team on getting along. He was saying that one of his favorite things in playing in the tier two scene is getting to play with different players, getting to know his teammates and synergize, not just in a, oh, we're all on the same page in terms of tactics, but you wanna be able to get along with those that you are working with. And that shows up in a lot of ways in your practice and mm -hmm. your ability to trust each other in game. And I think that him flourishing as a player, even working with Acadian as their coach, who he had previously played with on under the Golden Guardians banner, is proving to work well in them in trying to accelerate that development and bring them closer into the standings where Wildcard is, which is towards the top. Yeah, I mean, team environment, team culture, and personalities mixing is so important. And uh, we've all seen examples of what it looks like when that is not the case. So it is good that AoE are able to make that work. That's always been a strong suit of theirs. Now, as we get uh, back into the draft and what's going on here, I mean, the Tristana continuously being that really strong uh, priority pick coming through here is just gonna be grabbed right away. It's been a good look for Darkwings. And uh, it's going to be even nicer if they pair it with the Ivern. 
A lot of AoE's wins come around when they can get those kills onto Dark Wings and be yeah. able to accelerate him and turn those into victories. Wow. And their losses is kind of where that's not happening. But now if you're bringing in Tristana, hey, why not bring in a little ma magic damage elsewhere? They lock in the Ziggs. This would be the fourth Ziggs game for Lynx. Yeah, I mean, we're, we don't even have to pretend. We know exactly where both of these champions are going. Lynx has been such an incredible Ziggs player always really good at outputting some insane amounts of DPS and he's so strong uh, in terms of spacing and team fighting and everything like that. And on the other end too, Wildcard have had their fair share of strong champions. I mean, we're not on the patch where Aphelios got nerfed yet. Lens had some pretty good games on it. And Kiel will also have the Sejuani, which has shot up in priority recently. That Aphelios is a top pick for both Lynx and Lens, though Lynx hasn't played him as much recently. Lens very much going into comfort, actually hitting double digits in games on Aphelios with this one. This will be the 10th game during this split. But for the rest of it, yeah, you're just going with kind of the trusted picks in terms of power on this patch. You've got Rakan, obviously, for Engage. Sejuani is just an easy direction to go into when you're wanting to facilitate. I know we talk about Kiel's ability to carry, but even when looking at what Kiel was playing recently in the series yesterday, it was the Ivern as well as the Sejuani in the first game. And that first game was the one that they won against Supernova. So once again, going a bit more for that facilitative jungler to offset what Will is going to be doing with the same idea in mind on the Maokai. Right, and on the other end too, you're seeing a lot of the engage options removed here, just so that Will doesn't really have any dive bunny besides this Tristana that Dark Wings is gonna be piloting. And I like the focus on these engaged champs. I'm curious to see where AoE is going to go for Breezy. I mean, honestly, an Enchanter doesn't sound too bad here. I need you to hear me out real quick, Gabby. Mm -hmm, Janna mm -hmm. would go so hard. People right underutilize here. Janna. They do, thank you. It's just. This is so right. Especially with the Azir hover, if that one gets locked in, that monsoon, I can I can just smell the value that is coming yeah. through. So much value. And the Rel's banned away, but that's one of the cases where when Rel is locked in, Jenna's really yeah. great at disengaging with things like that. Um, but you know, Rakan, a lot of a lot of the support exactly. picks that just wanna go in on you. But, and I know that we've seen Breezy on Jano once this split, so maybe eventually down it's the possible. line, but looking in a different direction this time around, Wildcard have Soligo on Ari. Soligo is one of those players that has been around for some time and very comfortable on a lot of the, you know, those mid lane picks that always come through at some point in time. Ari being one of those when you want somebody Oriana. who can't have that gap closer. Oriana had an amazing shockwave yesterday actually in that yeah. victory play where pulling multiple of them in and Soligo just being a very reliable piece in the wildcard roster. Yeah, and it, it's not a Janna, sadly, but I, I see what AoE are going for. Alistar does offer you that bit of disengage there with the headbutt, but also the all-in. And I like rounding it out with the tank for concept. We've seen him have his ups and downs on the more meta lane dominant style champions, but this time around, he's just going to go ahead and go for the tried and true tank to make space and be able to offer more CC to the teamfight AoE have for themselves. Uh, if you are able to get tanky enough, Cool. That's a lot of HP for a wild card to try to burn through and just a body that you can use to keep Ziggs protected. Tristana relying a bit more on the in and out potential of that rocket jump. Don't see a switch just yet between Dark Wings and Link. Can we look at that real quick? There. The, the Zamudo on the, on the Riven? Oh, coming. the Riven! Yeah. I was looking over on the... Oh. I, he didn't even hover. He didn't even tease. He just he locked just, it in. Slammed that. Lo they locked it and switched it so fast. Uh, yeah. Okay. Whew. No nonsense. And I mean, I like it. Usually when you play tanks, you remove something like the Renekton, like the Jax, because uh, you get bullied. But guess what? Riven can bully you too. And that's a uh, really exciting top side matchup coming through. I love when top laners play these kinds of more mechanical, uh, aggressive types of picks. And Zamudo being that player who we were really excited about playing, it is great. Played the Akshan, played the Fiora, now playing the Riven. 
when you have a player that is creating that name for themselves within the T2 scene. One way to really do that is showing just how many picks you're willing to bring through and try and bring that power to the top side. You know that concept is just bringing the tank to hopefully be effective in the team fights, but wildcard going for a different look in the solo lane. Right, and, and that's really what it's going to be about, too, is, of course, as the Riven, you're going to be able to teamfight just fine. But what's going to happen as time goes on, especially if Zamuto gets a lead, he's going to be a monster in the side lane and someone that everyone on the side of AoE needs to be very careful about running into. So I like the pick. I like the teleport as well because realistically, being able to make cross map plays, especially later into the game, it's too valuable, especially in, against the comp like AoEs, for you to take something like the Ignite. Zamuto will still be able to run this match up top side just fine without it. All right, well, that's something that I definitely want to keep an eye on, how he does on the Riven over up top. But we also want to make sure that we'll track how Darkwings is doing across mid. A lot of pressure on Breezy and Will to see if they can get him ahead in the way that they have in the past to accrue the victories. Do you feel, beat like AoE's victories come from when Darkwings is set up to carry most, or do you think there's another condition that they can try to work through? So the big thing for me on this team, Darkwings definitely has his ups and downs. I think he's playing better than he mm -hmm. did in spring. And so far, the wins to me really seem to be like when they are able to play for Lynx. He was an AD carry in spring, who I thought was really strong when he was laning with Skytech. Now as Breezy being that player who we uh, believe is very strong and capable of going to that <laughs> next level, should be just fine. Zabuto, how many kills, but wow. No, he doesn't kill, but he sure does bully. Yeah. And that's just going to be harder and harder for Concept to be able to step up when you're already utilizing your sustain. And just to be able to stick around in that lane to minimize the lead. Ooh, caught Ooh, up in nice. the air. Dark wings. Slam down to the ground, but still in it, Will, coming from the lane. Yeah. Oh, it's over. Goodbye. Goodbye. Flash for yeah. flash. <laughs> A solo bolo to kick off the game. Yeah, really nice. Zbudo trying to recall. Go ahead and spend that gold. But this is just the beginning of what he's going to be able to do in the one-on-one -on -one here. Uh, I want to talk about mid lane really quick. Just that how Keel is able to interrupt the rocket jump with that Arctic Assault. Really important in these team fights. And part of why you see this champion come through here. There is a lot of all-in potential. Uh, I'm never going to get to talk. <laughs> too much action, too much action. Solo did charm Darkwings for a moment. Time to create the space needed to draw back towards that turret and still keeps the flash, still keeps the most important components of when you're facing the aggression from the enemy. We saw that Will was waiting in that line brush. If Soligo ended up entering forward, Lens gets knocked up on the entry from Breezy, but Dombre can shield him up with a battle dance. He did miss the grand entrance, which is a, a little bit of an oopsie. Trying to go for both targets, he ends up getting done. But yeah, Clan easily able to undo the ignite there from Breezy. And overall, we talk about how this early lane is going to go. Top lane, pretty uh, unsurprising based on what we talked about and what we're setting up. Bot lane is the interesting one here. You are outranged as the Ophelios, and it's easy for Breezy to be able to CC Dawnbrae and keep him off of Lynx most of the time here. So now that they've gotten these good health trades, they're able to set up this dive here for Will. Remember, no cleanse on Lens. Will's going for it, gets the root way downtown. Lens wow. eliminated by Lynx. So good play, even though there was the vision there in Tribrush, Keel ended up waiting or will rather end up waiting long enough before stepping onto it to secure and now more action Jesus. on the top side zamuto's just going to keep going for this trade pattern get him low at around 150 hp so then he just has to remain close to turret and then eventually follow up with more damage and hey, once those cooldowns come through you know he's going to be going for it there for another solo here concept needs to be very careful on that top side it's easily a big point of power here for wild card but overall this mid and bot side, like we're seeing examples of it over and over again, how they're finding these lane advantages, they're finding these leads, and that's how AoE wants to be trying to pilot this early game. But I will say, even with the teleport, 
Uh, after that dive come through wildcard take advantage of the reset timer and they're gonna pick up the first dragon as long as Zamuto walks away I mean, this is just as free as can be yep will showing on the top side there at the very end but wildcard were already burning down on to that dragon for coming to lane Soli go <gasps> buster shotted away wow. and with the explosive charge finally blasting dark wings makes that play mid Oh, and Zamudo now. Reap He's close to level six. The consequence of that? Win the C6, but the saplings are still going to just be able to zone off a little bit time. One route onto Zamudo goes. Concept gets the kill with the help of the jungler and this rotation from Breezy on top side. Heal, though, punishes Darkwings for staying in mid. It does cost him his flash. But it doesn't mean Wild Card are able to get something back. But it's AoE who get another kill in the top side. Putting some money into Concept's pocket. Zamudo, had he gotten level 6, he might have been able to turn things around. But instead, AoE walk away pretty happy with that one. As Wild Card still got that first dragon. So my eyes are set now on this Rift Herald in the coming minutes. With the pressure that this mid lane is able to get. And the fact that we've seen Breezy already roam around the map, I'm expecting AoE to put a lot of pressure on that neutral objective. And it's going to be kind of hard for Wildcard, who are really lacking that upfront damage at this stage in the game, to actually fight for it. What a scrap that we have had, Beat, just in these individual skirmishes. The dive down bot to we get one kill on the lens. Yeah, we had the solo kill of Zamuda onto Concept, the solo kill from Darkwings onto Soligo, kill with the follow up to punish. 1,000 gold ahead for AoE now at seven minutes. But when looking at the comps that are brought through, who are you expecting to get the greatest advantages in the early game? I'm leaning towards AoE. You still have Darkwings, who got that solo, has these extra stats that he's able to use to continue pressuring Soligo. And you still have a great front-to-back comp, even at this stage of the game. If you go topside and make a play for the Herald, Zamudo, he has a kill. He's accelerating this Riven, but he's not at a point where he can have these insanely huge impact in these team fights. So I'm still leaning towards AoE, like I was talking about. Rift Herald is spawning very soon. And I'm expecting that to be the focus once Will finishes farming his way up to that top side. Because Keel is ahead of Will right now in farm and in level, already at level six. And Will waiting to make sure that he has that nature's grasp the next time they get into a fight. But Keel has just been contesting. Looks what happens. Will is trying to catch up as much as possible, but Keel putting the pressure as much as he can too. He actually denies the level six. For just a little Damn. bit longer, but nothing really going to come from it here. So Ligo has a ward up on the Herald. It seems like the teams are kind of leaning towards that. That's about what they want to be focusing on. And because of that extra bit of time advantage and farm advantage, Heal is a level up, even though Will has ticked over to six. So he's just going to go ahead and get right over there. Zamudo still going at it. With concept. Oh, he canceled the auto! Oh, Concept kills him back to Budo. Oh, has kill coming in for the last moment with the ultimate. Wow! He holds the wave too, so it's actually going to start pushing away from Zamudo. Really nicely done there from Concept. Oh my god. And we keep seeing the same trade pattern here. Darkwings goes and gets charmed up by Soleiko, but just wants to try to get the marks on that explosive charge. Yeah, I was just looking at the itemization previously of Concept and Zamudo, and I'll wait on that thought. It is now on bot side. Will finally did get that ultimate, so he can have the double root on this one. Multiple okay, flashes used Ombre, trying to see if he can grab someone with the quickness, but in the end is okay. slain. Lens does take one down under the turret before falling two for one trade on the bot side, but Wildcard focusing on the Rift Herald to acquire the second neutral objective of the game. Oh, we're going to take a look at this replay here. Zamudo getting very aggressive. Knows his jungler is on the way, but this is the exact moment where he realizes, oh, it might be over. The real play there is just keep walking. Your jungler is so close. Maybe he thought that auto would kill, but this is interesting to me. Heal shows top. Will has spent so much time not farming, but constantly moving around the map, looking for plays to set up his team. 
and it has been paying off so far even though it's very risky because you can see it will gets a kill for himself lens dies to the turret and being damaged by links before that means links gets a kill too so links find them uh links and the rest of aoe find themselves in control yeah, quite a lead for links right now just breaking into 100 cs and then two kills to the name and I think that Will and Breezy want to keep pushing that lead as much as possible. This is the second Drake to have spawned. And Keel ensuring that they can get the scuttle so that there is some setup in their favor. So it's unlikely that this dragon can be stopped while, uh, or rather, it's unlikely this dragon can start without Wildcard knowing about it. As soon as they walk back into their respective lanes, AoE still going to be in that perfect position to go for it. They even have Concept walking down the river. He does have access to the Unstoppable Onslaught. We'll be able to easily join a 5v5 at Wildcard. Go for it. So instead, they're just going to back up, continue farming things away as AoE pick up an, uh, their first neutral objective of the game. But there was no plan from Keel to contest that had already been pathing over towards his top side jungle, but at least securing some vision to keep eyes on how many members of AoE were committing to that dragon. And I know with Concept and Zamudo going back and forth up on the top side, Keel wants to take the opportunity to continue up on the pressure, uses the hex gate here to reach this back positioning for the dive, and even Soligo as well. Right now, hanging and try. Gets the stun. Follow up with the oh, ultimate from wow. Keel, even bringing down the Rift Herald to ensure that they get additional value from this kill on the top side. Concept has fallen, and the turret is going to pay the price. All the while, AoE, though, on bot, getting plenty of plates and uh -oh. more. We're able to survive the Moonlight Vigil. Will gets a lock onto Lens, but Breezy cannot step up knowing he's only a couple of autos from death. Soligo comes in with the teleport, but has to back off. And it's just been good responses from AoE. That Herald on the top side and the fact that Keel has spent these last couple of minutes over there means they are happy to just abuse Lens here, who has been Taken out three times. Will has spent so much time in that area, making sure this Aphelios is behind. And when we look at Wildcard's draft, I, you don't see the double marksman, that secondary bit of DPS coming through here. It is an Ari, so setting this Aphelios as far behind as they have is going to bode really poorly for Wildcard. And you can see this dive coming through. Dombre dies to try and save his AD carry, but Lens, he walks back, and then you saw the rest. And Lens not nearly in as advantageous a position as his enemy bot laner right now. Links 3 and 0. Oh, all of those plates taken down on that first turret. Yep. The top turret though for AoE is almost to death. It's got one more plate to go. Zamudu was able to get some effort onto it off of that previous dive, but not enough to be able to finish it. Now has this wave to push through Darkwings, having a chance to shore up some more farm on that top side as well. But we're starting to see the unlocking from the lanes now that some of these outers have fallen. And we didn't talk about this yet, but it's Zig Stristana, man. They yeah. take turrets like you wouldn't believe. Lynx, Satchel charged the bottom tier one. He Satchel charged the mid tier one. He's 3-0-2. Oh, I'm kind of scared to ask, but I need to see the gold differences right now because the fact that AoE is ahead despite Will being so far behind Keel right now really speaks to the lead that Lynx must be holding on to. It shows even though Will was so far behind, the kills that he had had early on were enough to get the other laners ahead. So yeah. almost that trade off of, yes, I'm getting invaded, so it's harder for me to hit my levels nearly at a pace that Keel is able to. But at least when I enter these lanes and dish out some of my utility, we get some work of it. Keel's trying to go for a similar tactic, though, and helping Sully go get the charm and more onto Darkwing. So Tristana had been sieging on that top side, now punished for doing so, but still some value gained. And it's Keel again invading. He's, he just keeps on taking away gold and XP from Will. Will, like you said, he, he, what, he got his laners ahead at great risk. If it didn't work, he would be behind and his team wouldn't have any leads to show for it. But even though it did work, Keel's at 4-0. 
He's doubled Will's farm, and he's actually three levels ahead of him at the moment here. As Zamudo. Oh, oh my god. Just the duking it out constantly, whether it's on the top side or the bottom. And Concept making quick work of Zamudo and Wildcard, therefore, are pressured. I mean, these are looks that we are seeing Zamudo go for. He is wanting yeah. to get aggressive and he wants to get the scrap in. But then now that some of this itemization has come online and the thresholds for burning down Cyan are a bit more difficult to read, we're seeing that reversal of the tide. And right now, AoE asserting that pressure on this tier two. And gosh, that siege is just oh so good. That sort of just disappeared. And I will say Zamudo, you want to take down the Scion? Maybe don't go for Ravenous Hydra first. He's probably building towards that Black Cleaver now. I think that's when you feel good about trying to just cut through all this armor that Concept must be sitting on there. 179 at this point. And all that extra health from Graspin is passive. No wonder he's able to solo kill him. But right now, if we could take a look at the gold that all the players are holding on to. Like, I want to see who's holding what. I can already guess. Lynx is at the top of the board, which means that no matter what Keel has gotten for himself, no matter what Saligo has been able to help set up, the big thing here is that it's a Sejuani. You have a lot of tankiness, you do a good bit of damage, but the fact that Lynx and Dark Wings are at the top of the charts is really important here for AoE's team fight. And Walkar bring in a teleport. They do want to contest here against AoE. And Will already using the ultimate Dombre blasted on out of this. Soligo is still healthy, but in the back of the pit, AoE have only lost one compared to the two. Ooh. Heal flashing onto the other side. Charm onto Will, the subject of the glacial prison. But in the center of them all, Soligo goes down. Dark Wings hopping on in, gets the explosive charge onto Keel, able to continue charging it up. But Concept finish him off with a Q. And it's AOE that will stack their second Drake of the game and just rolling over Wildcard with the gold lead they have accrued. And that risky early game pathing, all that attention we talk about from Will, it paid off right here, Gabby, because he is sure a couple levels down, maybe a, a couple thousand gold in terms of item components down, but look at how strong Lynx is and how much damage Dark Wings can do in this fight. The target selection is good. You jump on Lynx, the most fed member, and it took everything they had to get him out of the picture. And by the time they got the kill that they wanted, it cost them everything. And the rest of this fight is Lens trying to auto attack a Scion who, which we clocked, had 180 armor at the time. And Lens is so far behind. The damage is just not there. Yeah, you can see that those shots are not doing much when landing into concepts, but because of the positioning of AoE, Lens is unable to really dish his damage where he needs to. And unfortunately for Wildcard, that goes AoE's way. They have just been doing so much with the damage that they have built onto both Dark Wings and Lynx. I mean, the Leandri's Anguish, as well as that yeah. Death Cap completed for Lynx, even a bit of that anti-heal with the orb into the pocket. So there's just AoE that have control right now and continue to do so in the enemy jungle. Heal and Dombre spent so much time in the early game trying to deny Will by entrenching upon his jungle, and now it's Keel that can't move anywhere in safety. Yeah, the whole time Will's like, who cares? I'm Maokai. I just gotta press some buttons and my teammates get the kills. It's just so free, and it's been working out wonderfully for them. AoE have 5k up on Wildcard as a result, and Keel getting close towards the end of that Rift Herald timer. It might be a little awkward. Oh, a charm on one. Multiple knockups onto AoE, but the Nature's Grass from downtown means a Dombre falls after getting the quickness out. And AoE have a bit of a wave that they can focus onto this turret. <laughs> you see Jesus. Dark Wings immediately able to blast it down. And it's just going to be difficult to stand up to the damage that AoE have now. It wasn't long before this that the Navori Quick Blades had been completed for Dark Wings. Yeah. So the long range damage that aoe can offer is becoming all the more potent an attempt by heal to get the glacial prison lock onto links but just a little bit of a sidestep out of it that would have been a much needed pick coming through here and oh oh saligo 
Couldn't quite get... I'm not actually sure what he was going for there. Lynx didn't have flash. Maybe he didn't know. The point is, they really Ew. try to get this kill. Still going for it. They do manage to finish off Lynx. They wanted to ensure that Shelly got that first charge. They did. And now AoE has to come in to answer. Darkwing's rocket jumps in. Ends up using the Buster to kill one off. Knock up here on the entry onto Zamudo, who wants to get into the back line, but keeps getting knocked away by Breezy. Has to flash. And now Zamudo is so separated from Lens and Dombre. And Lens is healing up with the red gun intact, but is continuously the target of Breezy, who goes in for the knock up once again. But the rampage is good for eliminated from wild card AoE out on top. And that is the perfect example of the gold differences you're seeing there. The fact is, Wildcard, they almost won this fight, Gabby. They did everything they could to try and kill Lynx and get this mid-tier one turret. They succeeded in getting Lynx, but that's really all that they got as the teleport comes through from Concept. They're able to get so much damage down. And the big thing again here is that, I mean, trying to take down this Scion is unreal. You are hitting a brick wall at the moment here, and it's so hard for any real damage to come down. Yeah, Zamudo is very focused on trying to make sure that no Darkwings flavor. was taken out, which he was, but then you're in the middle of a Scion and Breezy, and they're able to collapse, and that's what you see again. Just everybody circling around a single member in this voice, Keel, who's trying to escape. Dombre is separated by Dark Wings, who ends up getting knocked up, but can rocket jump towards the rest. Eventually, Keel is burned down by AoE, and they can set their sights onto Zamudo. So, Lens walking towards the teleport of Saliga, who throws out a charm immediately on entry in case AoE continue for it, but they don't care about the rest of the fight. They're going over to the Baron. And it's just been domination here from AoE. They win another fight, they secure the big purple worm, and they're well on their way to a soul point as well. They're so far ahead, they don't even have to worry about backing and spending the gold. They could just walk straight to this Drake. But those empowered recalls, the fact that they wiped out so much of Wildcard means the fact that they can just use this Turo Baron buff and the Hex Gates to just basically spawn at the Dragon Pit. Moving towards it, that's for sure. And with two and a half minutes to go on that Turo Baron buff, it is AoE that will continue to assert their control over this river in front of the dragon because there hasn't really been a way beat for Wildcard to be able to prevent AoE from dishing out the damage onto a single member. And I feel like part of that is on a concept as well as Breezy for zoning off in the way they've been able to. That's right. And the fact is, Will just had the right idea this entire game, being able to focus this bot side there to set Lens behind. We kind of talked about it in draft and the early game. Wild cards comp, again, they have this single threat comp. Yeah, you have Zamudo who should threaten the side lane, but he's really far behind. He can't really do anything this game. It's Lens who's supposed to be dealing the bulk of the damage, especially into a tank like the Scion. But he's so far behind that he hasn't been able to do much of anything. He's just tickling him at this point. So Wildcard, they don't have a way to team fight. Their comp just doesn't work right now. And Lens is still down summoners. So some more vulnerability on the Wildcard side. Dombre, look how much damage he takes. Jeez. And all the knock up onto Keel who has to queue out of it. Concept is drawing enough of the power towards mid, ushering this way forward. The remainder of AoE were able to finish off that bot side inhibitor knock up from the charge up Q from Concept onto Zamudo who wants to go in for the kill gets the stun and Lens is here to follow them again Inferno Bomb doesn't quite land onto Lens but did zone him forward now Concept is going down down downtown Zamudo almost to follow gets smashed Lynx finishes him off look you're just going to keep throwing the satchels and more onto the turret as another cannon wave moves forward, but Dombre is the first to go in, gets a knock oh, on to Breezy, but Breezy has popped the unbreakable will, but eventually you can break. Knocks up two in the back line, right before falling though. Keel is looking for the look onto Lynx, but Will comes over wow, to Dombre, Dombre in the back line. A couple more of a knock up on him, and the explosive charge lands onto Dombre, but Darkwings is not in range to be able wow. to get it that much more charged up. A good attempt with the charm here does mean that Darkwings had to flash away, but it's flashes from both of the mids. What a scrap here in the mid lane. 
Wow, wild card. They've really made something happen there for a little bit. And that's just so astonishing considering how far behind in gold they are. Lens hitting that two items is a big spike for the Abelios, even though he is just so far behind of everybody else. You remove some Baron buffs, and as long as Saligo, uh, oh. he almost has his ult. He might be able to live. Double teleport top to collapse on Soligo. He's ushering over the wall. Oh. He's got the sparrow. But guess what? Oh my what? god! There's already multiple members of AoE. Lynx what? gets the kill. Are we gonna talk about that? Are we gonna talk about that ult? It did like 80% of his health. <laughs> oh my god. That was a, a lot a lot of damage, my friend. Lots of uh, lots of damage. Yeah, and uh Saligo is off the rift for lots and lots of time. His AoE are gonna continue yeah. knocking I mean, down structures. Uh, 20 what? seconds. Long enough. Nine point six! That's what that just went to. You're just oh. taking the turrets, trying to put this to the 10k mark for AoE. Oh they got it. Grabbing the second inhibitor for themselves. You can see the pings going across mid. They're just going for that slow movement across all the lanes to put the pressure in the way they can because the, the supers have already spawned over down bot, which means that you have to send someone by wildcard to take care of that. In this case, it's Zabudo, who has teleport to join the team, but that gives agency to AoE to try and propel their onslaught all the more. Keel's looking for the angle, but right on top of a control ward, he has to take that down before he can do anything about it. Dombre has already been marked down to half of his life. A glacial prison onto Will means that he answers with the nature's grasp, gets a root onto two. Mega Inferno Bomb just sets up for Breezy to be able to knock him down. Dombre already gone, and AOE can set their sights on so much more as soon as these supers come from the mid, from the bottom side. Yeah, they can look to close it out. Lens has the Inferno, so there's a lot of wave clear. He's gonna look to use it. This is gonna be really tough. I think AOE need to walk away from this one. Their soul is coming up in a minute. Uh, hex gates aren't gonna be the way, but they wanna stay. They're sticking around. Heal is the focus for now. Concept venturing forward with the unstoppable onslaught, and he uses Umbra's the back. satchel to kick away Keel. Look at that burn, though. Even though there's some tankiness to Zedwani, it doesn't Link's last gone. here. Charm on to Concept. And Concept is eating up a lot of the damage. Jombre going into the back line with a knockup, but Keel is still effectively out of the fight. Breezy looking for more has all of the tankiness to him to step in front of the carries of AoE. Dark Wings walking it on out with the rest of the squad. They put a lot of pressure onto Wildcard and they can rotate over towards that soul. The dragon spawning in five seconds time. This wallet dip is astronomical from the size of AoE. Wildcard have had several good looks, but the fact is they don't have the numbers. They don't have the stats to actually make any use of it. So now we're at the point where we have double supers in every lane with all inhibitors down. AoE, they've gotten that mount, uh, rather the Hextech soul coming through here. So more damage, more wave clear on their side. As if they needed more than that. Yeah. So AoE. Saying, like, do they need more damage? I know, no. Uh, it doesn't. It's just insult to injury. But AoE, this is good. This is a team we wanted more consistency from. This is a team who have had their ups and downs. And when you have a tremendous lead like this, I just need to see them close it out. All they need to do at this point is group as five and make it happen. Dark Wings did finish off that Bloodthirster, so even more capability to just yeah. stick into these fights as AoE goes straight from getting the soul to going and taking another Turo Baron buff. And they were able to acquire a lot on their previous siege. And now as they wear purple, do all the more. You can yeah. see the way that Breezy can create the pathways for Lynx, but oh! are trying to make their last stand. They got it. Your multiple members, and Lens does get the kill onto Lynx, so that's a lot of damage eliminated, but you still got Dark Wings there to dish even more. Keel has to walk it back into the base, but AOE, they've got supers on all sides. It's that bottom inhibitor that respawned, but they don't even care. They're just gonna keep focusing on Zekiel. Another rocket jump in for the slam. And AOE, a domination of damage in this game. Wow, AOE slam wild card, who are at this time going into this match, our second seed so far and one of our better teams. Really convincing win for them. Will clearly had the better read on who to play for in the early game, because Lynx, 
He cashed out. Yeah, Lynx got a lot of gold very early yes. and had a lot of damage as a result. Same for Darkwings in the mid lane. I mean, it was really the carries positioned to do what they needed to do. Yeah, it, it was perfect for them. They had the front to back. The Riven didn't work out for Zamudo, and it was this kind of double whammy of the fact that you play a little bit for Zamudo in the top side, but you're also exposing your real carry in this draft in Lens to being dived over and over again. Even though he had some good looks, they just weren't enough. And I want you to quickly imagine with me, Gabby. He has maybe one more item in his pocket, maybe an item and a half, and think of what that could have looked like. Mm, what could it have looked like? Potentially yeah. Yeah. something glorious, but we may never know, Beatdown. We may never know. Gosh, Wild Card are going to really try and put themselves in a position to make this an even 1 1, but AoE definitely are feeling good after that game. We've got more of the NACL to come. But remember, everybody watching at home, the LCS Challengers League is brought to you by Turo, the world's largest car sharing marketplace where you can book any car you want for just about any occasion. Forget about boring rental cars at Turo.com. We ain't got no boring games here today, though. Hoping for another exciting one to close things out on this particular stream. We'll see you on the other side of this break.